Scalding a, a duck is a different thing than scalding a chicken. So what we have here is a waterfowl whose feathers are oiled, arranged, quantified for the express purpose of repelling water. And we're going to attempt to scald it to get the water on the skin. And everything is working against us in that attempt. So scalding a, a duck is a different thing than scalding a chicken. And you know, I find that uh, when it comes to setup and ultimately just return on your time and your effort, I've never tried the, the paraffin wax. Um, I've never done any other additives to the water, you know, soap or um, changing its pH or, or resin of any kind. The key is to get the water on the skin. And the best way to do that is to part the feathers. And so they've got to be saturated and then they've got to be parted and they have about five times, six, seven, eight times the feathers that a chicken has. So it's a lot more to deal with. And so my, my approach is to scald them longer and it ends up being a little less than two minutes, again at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And you spend half the time at the beginning just plunging the duck in and out to part the feathers. And then, maybe halfway through the scald, the water actually reaches the skin, and the scald then begins in earnest to loosen the feathers from the skin. And so because there's lots of plunging going on, I use my trusty uh, potato masher. And uh, this is accidentally designed to perfectly fit the, the knees of Muscovy ducks, kind of like that. So they will, they'll sit in there. And when I do that, I can then push the duck in and out. And this is, this is the key right here, this motion. And you have to watch it too and judge, is that, are those feathers parting or are they staying dry? You know, if I look and I dig a little bit, that is dry as a bone. And so I gotta keep going with the plunging and you're splashing water everywhere. You know, this is all part of it. I'll even put it in there and really shake it back and forth like that. And we really want the, uh, the feathers to part and I'll test it as we go. See, we're not even quite there yet. Those are still dry feathers under that surface. So in and out. And it could take almost a minute to actually get past the feathers to the skin. And only when that hot water gets to the skin does the scalding begin to loosen the feathers. That's the big challenge. I do like to try to get those feet in there for the duck stock. All right, let's see, are we starting to, now we're starting to get to the skin. That's pretty good. I'm gonna take off one leg so we can get in between them. Spread them out. And I bet we're pretty close now. Maybe just at, just under two minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can still see we've got some dry feathers even after all of that, but they're coming off with ease. Pretty good. Yeah, start the plucker.
So what will remain usually on a duck are these long, long feathers on the tail. And they're easy to pull out if you don't try to grab all of them at once, you know, one or two at a time. And you can just jerk them right out of there. Now the ideal situation is to time this with the molt. So what will happen with ducks is the, the most, the thing you should fear most when scalding and uh, defeathering a duck are the, is the down. And they have that when they're young. And so you want to wait until they are fully fledged before you do this. Then they have large adult feathers. They don't have that chick down under their, under their feathers. So basically as soon as the ducks have their full adult coloring, full adult feathers, they're ready to go. And that will be different, you know, with uh, different breeds of ducks that mature at different rates. But I think usually with meat ducks of mallard descent, that's somewhere around 11 weeks. But they'll go through another one too. And so if you can, it's best to time it then. You know, when your, dogs, when your ducks are looking kind of thin and raggedy, like they need to wash their clothes or something because their feathers are hanging out everywhere, they're sparse, they don't have all their tail feathers in, that is not the ideal time to harvest them because they will have a coat of new feathers coming in underneath. And that's when you'll find yourself just picking with tweezers uh, to get rid of all the down. It grows almost as thick as hair. And so avoid those seasons and stick with when the duck is fully fledged, then do your killing. So there's the, the spike I was talking about on the wings. That little guy is sharp, so that's why you want to wear your armor when you hold muscovies. Beautiful, we caught this guy at a good time. That, that breast is just clean. That skin will crisp up without a feather in it. And all of this are culinary decisions, uh, not least of which is where you deliver the kill. You know, we, I, I, cut the neck right up there just behind the beak because that's where it's convenient to break the neck. But it also leaves all of this neck skin intact, this whole length. And that's, that's quite a lot of skin. And so I like to use it as a sausage casing. You can grind up some of the thighs, add some back fat to it, season it with, add some nuts and some raisins soaked in brandy overnight. Make a little sausage and then stuff it into the neck skin, tie off both ends and poach it gently in stock. Very delicious. You can peel the beak even on ducks. You can even get in there and peel the tongue. Ducks have tongues that are actually worth harvesting. You can make, uh, you can kind of make a a noodle dish out of them, but instead of noodles, it's it's actually duck tongues. They're uh, they have a little one bone in them, but they're they're worth harvesting. They're pretty good. Got the clean head for the stock pot. This guy looks pretty good. We probably could have let him scald a, let him scald a little longer to get rid of this uh, epidermis. This is that uh, kind of this yellowish fatty membrane that you see. We could rub it all off if we want, but I'm not picky about it. It doesn't bother me at all. Beautiful.
full harvest of a Muscovy Drake. A lot of food here. And Muscovies are very lean, so you can treat the breast just like steak. L lean red meat. Thanks for watching. To dive deeper into more Meat Smith membership content, click up there. To support us on Patreon, look down there and click the link in the profile. To subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be notified of more videos. And then we've got some more right back there behind me. Thanks.